Hi everyone, I'm Michael. Welcome to Reading at Home. I love pretending to drive a car. Do you love pretending to drive a car too? Or maybe a truck? Or even a train? Maybe you like to pretend to race a go-kart. Why don't we hear a story all about racing billy carts? Reading at home. Hi, I'm Michelle. Hello, I'm Amy. Today, we're going to read a story that I wrote called Glitch. Glitch was a trembly, twittery, twitchy kind of bug who built amazing creations from the treasures he found on the rubbish heap where he lived. June was much more calm, which made her a brilliant billy cart driver and his most trusted friend. Glitch twitched daily through the mountains of mouldy mess the dump trucks piled on the side of their hill, rummaging for materials he could use to make the best billy cart ever. He borrowed buttons, bottle tops and boxes. He collected cardboard, cling wrap and cellophane. He recycled ribbons, rubber bands and random rubbish. Glitch built June the best billy carts in the business, but they had never won a race. Thanks to Glitch's twitchiness, they had never even finished a race. One year, Glitch twitched left when he was meant to lean right. He was sorry. I'm such a scatterbrain bug. Another time, Glitch forgot to mention a large rock was in their way. He was even sorrier. I'm a mug of a bug. Last year, Glitch forgot to check the brakes and he was the sorriest he had ever been. June could have been badly hurt. This year, their billy cart was fast, very fast. So fast that on their very first test run, he spun out of control in a jumble of bruised legs and bent antennae. Glitch's heartstrings tugged, tugged, tugged when he saw the look of disappointment on June's face. How are you going to drive with bent antennae? worried Glitch. I'm not, said June. You are. This made Glitch twitchier than ever. On the morning of the big race, June arrived to collect Glitch. She knocked at the door, but no one answered. She knocked again, louder. Oh, I'm sorry, mate, whispered Glitch through the door. I'm having a bad hair day. You don't have any hair, said June. She knocked loudly at the window. I'm sorry, mate, whispered Glitch. I seem to have caught a tummy bug. You are a bug, shouted June. Nervously, Glitch crept outside. Mate, I'm scared I'll let you down again, twitched Glitch. It's good that you're scared, June said. It means you're about to do something brave. The only way you'll let me down is if you don't drive. At the top of the rubbish pile, the two friends sat for a moment at the starting line, sandwiched between the piles of scrap metal, spoiled spaghetti and single socks. Don't let being scared stop you, said June, giving Glitch a reassuring smile. No matter what happens, we'll always be friends. Glitch smiled back, twitched, then gripped the steering wheel tightly, very tightly. On your mark, get set, go! The racers charged, crashing sideways and chasing each other. Family and friends cheered them on. Glitch and June zoomed past piles of potato peels, bumped around the mound of hairy hot dogs and screeched between the broken computer screens. Glitch leaned right when they needed to go right. 
June looked out for rocks and Glitch swerved around them. And the brakes worked perfectly, slowing them down just enough for them to come in safely in... second place. Don't let it bug you. June nudged Glitch with her antennae. We'll get them next year. Glitch wasn't bugged about where they'd come in the race. With his best friend by his side, he was enjoying the ride. And that's the end of the story. What a fun story. There were lots of interesting words used in that story. Did you notice that some of the words began with the same sound? Hmm, that's called alliteration. In Glitch, we heard alliteration. Let me think of an example. Hmm. Glitch was a trembling, twittering, twitchy kind of bug. Did you hear the alliteration? That's right, trembling, twittery, twitchy all start with Did you notice another example in the book? Listen carefully as I share the alliteration. Glitch recycled ribbons, rubber bands and random rubbish. Did you hear the alliteration? Rubber bands, recycled, random rubbish all start with the er sound. I wonder if you can help me. I want to recycle some items, but I can only add things that begin with er. Let's check some of the items I have with me. I can start with a ruler. Did you hear the er sound? Ruler. Yep, into the box it goes. How about, hmm, listen carefully, a bottle. Does bottle begin with er? No, bottle begins with b. Can't put that into the box. Maybe I could try a ribbon. A ribbon has er at the beginning. I'm going to recycle my ribbon. Hmm. How about the spoon? No? You're right. Spoon does not begin with er. Maybe I could try my rock. Listen carefully, rock. Yes, into the box it goes, rock begins with er. Maybe you could find some items around your house that you could recycle. When you're reading, listen carefully for any examples of alliteration where you hear the same sound at the beginning of words. Thanks, Amy. I found a few things here too that all start with the same letter, like this basketball and my brown bear. Wasn't it great the way that Glitch made his billy cart from things that he'd found around him? It sounds like a fun project, doesn't it? How about I take a look around here to see if I can find any cool things and we can make a billy cart together. See you soon. Reading at Home TV. Welcome back to Reading at Home. Wasn't Glitch clever the way he made his billy cart out of things he found at home? I reckon he must have been hammering and sawing. Have you ever made anything at your house? Maybe you've made a fort. <laughs> well now, Brianna's gonna show us how to make a billy cart. Art at home. Thanks, Michael. Hi, I'm Brianna, and today in the art room, we're going to follow in Glitch's footsteps and make our very own billy cart out of things from around the house. Now, first, you'll need to make sure a grown-up's around so they can supervise. Then, you'll need a cardboard roll, some milk bottle lids, some skewers or toothpicks, a matchbox, scissors, and plenty of colourful pens and stickers to decorate. Now, we're going to take our cardboard roll, and the first part, we might need a grown-up to help us because they're going to use the scissors. Now what we're going to do is make four small holes at the bottom. This is where we're going to stick our skewers through and how we're going to attach the wheels. Then on the top, we're going to make a rectangular hole and that's where the seat's going to go in. Now, once you've made these holes, here's one I prepared earlier. 
we're going to stick our skewers through the four at the bottom. Now you'll need to focus because you need to go in one side and out the other. Now be mindful of the sharp ends, you don't want to poke yourself. Then once you have your skewers in, you're then going to take your wheels and stick them on. Again, watch the sharp ends. You may need a grown up to help you with this part. Now, do you know how many wheels a car has? Let's count them out, shall we? One, two, three, and that's right, four, four wheels. Now it's looking pretty good, but I think it needs a seat. So we'll put him down there and then grab our matchbox. Now push out this middle section and we're going to place that in the car like so. And there's the seat. So now we're ready to go to the final step. And I think it's the best part, decorating. Now I've painted my car red because I think red's the fastest color. But what's your favorite color? You can paint it whatever you like. I'm also going to place some stickers on for the lights, just at the front there. And then maybe some more at the back. Maybe a few more stars because I really like stars. Here we go, on the back, they can be the lights as well. And once you're ready with all your stickers, you've got a car that's ready to race glitch. Let's go, vroom vroom, woo! Well, it looks like Brianna is set to race glitch for first place next year. It's been fun hearing stories about racing go-karts, but it is time for another story. Would you like to hear a story about a little bird who flies off into the countryside on an adventure? All right, we'll do that next. See you soon. Reading at Home TV. Welcome back to Reading at Home. I love adventures. There's nothing more exciting than heading out into the world to explore. Have you ever been on an adventure? The best thing is when you get home, there's always so many great stories to tell. Well, our next story is all about one such great adventure. Reading at home. Hi, I'm Dimity Powell. Hi, I'm Amy. And today I'm going to read you one of my picture books, Pippa, written by me and illustrated by Andrew Plant. Are you ready to go on a big adventure with Pippa? Let's go. Pippa loved to explore. She liked going out on a limb to exercise her wings. Percy and Peg were appalled. Come back, come back, they cried. You'll fall. They fed her pigeon milk night and day and snuggled close, telling her scary stories so she would never fly away. But Pippa wanted to fly. She flapped and fluttered till she was fit and strong. But every time she tried to take off, Percy and Peg cooed, oh no, 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 you're far too young. One day, while her parents were out foraging for food, Pippa seized her chance. She teetered to the end of the longest limb and flapped her wings furiously. Suddenly, Pippa was flying, dipping and swirling, slicing and twirling. Pippa sailed above the town, over a snaking river and across a patchwork of paddocks. Further and further away from home. She had never felt so free, so happy and so <gasps> pooped. Her wings ached, her muscles cramped and her tummy rumbled. Dinner, she thought, and turned as a blistering bullet of beak and talons shot past her. <gasps> falcon! Pippa's heart raced, her wings thrashed, the falcon swerved. Pippa zigged, he zagged, she spiralled, he swooped, she ducked, he dived, she dodged and tumbled straight into a cold, dark barn. <gasps> Pippa shivered. She was stiff and sore and all alone and very hungry. Scratching about for some corn and wheat, she suddenly spied a horrible pair of hungry red eyes. Bursting from the barn into the chill night air, Pippa cried, I want to go home. But 
home was far away through falcon haunted skies. How would she ever find her way? Pippa's chest heaved as she reeled through the gloom, frightened and lost and more hungry than she had ever been. She took a deep breath and a familiar scent tickled her beak. Could this be the way? With a somersaulting heart, Pippa flapped with all her might. Then she followed the smell of home through the starlit night, across the paddocks, over the river, and through the town, all the way back to where she belonged. But do you think from the cheeky little glint in Pippa's eye that she's gonna remain at home for too much longer? Hmm, I wonder. I think this just might be the beginning of Pippa's adventures. But that's the end of the story for now. Did you enjoy that story about Pippa? Pippa was the main character. Do you know what characters are? Characters can be people. They can be animals like Pippa. Or they can be things like cars and trains. Characters can think things as well. Pippa thought she wanted to fly far away from the nest. Characters can feel. Pippa, at the beginning of the story, felt free and happy. We can describe characters by the way that they look. Let's take a closer look at Pippa. Here she is. Pippa has a blue-grey head and flapping wings. She has a big puffy chest and two tiny little feet. She must use these wings to fly far away. Pippa had feelings too. Remember at the beginning of the story, she felt joyful, free. But once she flew away, and she saw the terrifying falcon, she felt frightened and scared. And soon she found herself pooped and hungry. We can understand characters by thinking about what they look like and how they feel. Maybe you could describe the characters in the books you're reading next time you read. Thanks, Amy. I think Pippa was really adventurous. That means she was excited to get out into the world and explore. Does that sound like something you would like to do? Well, up next, we're going to go on an adventure of our own. You'll love it. See you soon. Reading at Home TV. Welcome back to Reading at Home. Wasn't that a great adventure that Pippa went on in the storybook? She had to swerve away from a falcon and flap away from a fox. I think the best adventures are adventures that happen outside. And that is exactly where Nicola is right now. Let's see what she's up to. Moving at home. Hi everyone, my name's Nicola. I loved reading about Pippa's adventure. Let's think about all the different ways we can go on an adventure. An aeroplane? Have you ever been on an aeroplane? Let's try and fly like an aeroplane. Now before we start, can you make sure that you have enough space to be safe? We're going to balance on one foot and fly like an aeroplane. When you're ready, bring your wings out to the side, tip your body forward, and then lift up one leg behind you. It's okay if you wobble. Flying like an aeroplane if you want to. Make your aeroplane go down one way, then down the other way. Let's swap legs. One foot is on the ground, arms out for the wings. Tip forward, lift up the leg behind you and fly like an aeroplane. Zooming through the air. Well done. What else can we go on an adventure in? A boat? 
come down to sit on your bottom and lift your feet up see if you can balance in your boat bring your hands together we're going to row our boat one side big paddle other side three more one two three well done everyone you know what also I love riding my bike come down to lie on your back lift your legs up first we're going to go up a hill so our legs our pedals are slow one two three four five now we're going to go downhill as fast as you can one two three four five six seven eight nine ten well done everyone see you next time Thanks, Nicola. That adventure was so much fun. And we'll have plenty more fun when you join us next time. To continue reading storybooks before we see you next, join the Premier's Reading Challenge. Simply head to the website on screen. We'll see you next time. Bye. Bye. Authorised by the Queensland Government, Brisbane.